In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to build a line graph report. Here you see an example of a line graph report on defects. This report also has a start and end date so that we can narrow our results by time. In addition, we can narrow our results further by defect status. So for example, we could choose to see only defects that are closed over the period of time we've selected. We can also take a look at all defects, no matter what their status, over the same period of time. Now we've gone from just viewing closed defects to reviewing defects of various types of status. Let's go take a closer look at how this report was created. Back in the report editor, we can see that matrix report was selected. In addition, we have defined some report criteria that allows us to filter our results. And then, of course, we have the specific data elements in our report. They have all been placed in the appropriate column heading, row heading, and data field boxes. As we zoom out, we can now go to our graph component of the report, see that a line graph was chosen, and the data fields, defect creation date, and sum or total have been placed in the appropriate axis. Let's start from scratch and create this same report. First we give it a title, then we select the report type, again matrix report, Now it's time to define the data elements that we want to include in this report. We're going to open up the folder called Defect Tracking because that's where the data fields we're interested in including in this report are located. First we're going to choose the CDT field or Created Date and place that as a row heading. Next we're going to choose the Status field, the Defect Status field, and make that a column heading so the de different defect status appears across the top. Next we're going to take total defects and make that our data field so that we are measuring total defects at the intersection of status and creation date. We also like to total defects and we're going to add that sum box under total defects so that we can sum the different totals under each status. We also want to give that sum field a name, so we're going to call it total defects. So that row now has a label. Next we're going to go to the defect creation date field and modify its properties. We want to narrow our results so we're only interested in reporting on defects from a certain period of time. We also want our results to be grouped by, say, quarters. We could, of course, choose days or months or years. Next, we're going to add a filter so that we can narrow our search results even further. In this case, we're going to let the user select the defect status field at runtime. We're also going to add an additional filter of create a date so that we can choose a start and end date for our report. Now that we have the basics, let's preview that report, make sure it works, and it's designed as we like it. So first we're going to choose a date range. A project or projects and execute the report. Here we have all of our defects across a date range sorted by defect status category. Now that we know our report is working correctly, let's go ahead and add a graph to it. So we'll select line graph. And now we're going to drag 
into the appropriate boxes, first defect creation date as an x-axis, and then total defects on the y-axis. We're also going to label each axis. And now we're ready to save our report. We can define which users we want to be able to run this report and the access privileges we'd like them to have. Click Save, and now our report is ready. Again, we add our date range. Choose the project, execute the report, and now we have our graph as well as our data table. We can also export this report to various formats. Thanks very much for tuning in.